G'day, Blade Dickheads. Vaping Bogan back again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all doing tip fucking top. Got a couple of tips on a couple of mods today. Little AIOs from BP Mods. It's called the Lightsaber. Kind of appropriately named. It's got a bit of a lightsaber look to it. Comes in two versions. There's a little one, which is a 1500 milliamp hour internal battery, and a slightly larger one, the L model, uh, which is a 2100 milliamp hour internal battery. And they both have uh, sort of interchangeable wooden sleeves. This is the stock one that came with the uh, Model S, and this one here on the Model L is a sort of optional aftermarket, uh, slightly different wood grain, but they look sort of a bit more plain out of the box, and then there are some other options, including fucking snakeskin dickheads. Oh, right. <laughs> so I've whacked this uh, this other one on here because I quite like the uh, the wood grain on that Model L there. Now, as I said, they are AIO, so they have a little detachable magnetic tank here. Uh, one of them I've got an MTL coil in, the Model S, and the, uh, the larger one I've got a sort of direct lung 0.3 ohm coil. Uh, but if you don't like either of those options, there is a 510 adapter available to turn it into a mod you can use with any fucking RTA or even RDA. So BP mods make some classy stuff generally, and I gotta say that for an AIO, this is probably one of the nicer, classier looking mods. It looks, reminds me a lot of a mech mod. Obviously it's got a little board in there. The Model S uh, does 40 watts and the Model L goes up to 60, obviously slightly different battery capacity, so it makes sense uh, on the uh, wattages there. We're gonna go through all the bits and bobs. Let's take them for a ripperoo. Uh, the Model S first, as I said, I got the uh, 0.8 ohm MTL coil in here running at 12 watts. Very nice, I've got to say the flavour off of these, very, very tasty. And they're actually compatible with some of the PNP and GTX coils out there. So if you uh, can't get or you're not happy with the uh, BP Mods coils, uh, then you can get some of those GTX or PNP coils. We'll go through the details later. Now let's have a toot on the uh, Model L with the 0.3 ohm direct lung at 30 watts. Again, very nice flavour off of that 0.3 ohm coil. Not disappointed at all, and uh, some decent clouds for 30 fucking watts. We're gonna get down and have a good squiz at both of these, run you through what they come with in the different kits, uh, as well as the 510 adapter and the sleeves and things like that, but before we can do any of that shit, yeah, we gotta crack a fucking beer. One of my favourite local Australian breweries, One Drop Brewing. This is their Illusion. It's an Imperial Berliner Weiss with Red Plum and Shiraz Free Run. Mm, sounds interesting. A hefty 7.1% being an imperial. Illusion is the first of all pleasures. Come with us on a journey through grain and grape, a magical merging of two spheres, a space where Australian fruits meld seamlessly with our unique sour Berliner base, magically combining red plums and Shiraz free-run grape juice with two lactobacillus souring strains, an old European farmhouse yeast and an encore of acidity from an ascetic blend. A truly illusionary experience for your drinking pleasures. Well, it sounds like a lot of uh, beer waffle there, but uh, certainly has me intrigued. Uh, where are one drop? They're uh, brewing over in uh, Botany in uh, New South Wales, Australia. Let's just see how it bloody tastes. Let's drink a beer. Well, as you'd expect, it's got a very plum Shiraz-like appearance. Oh yeah, smells a little whiny, dickheads, just like my wife. <laughs> no, she's awesome. Let's uh, have a go. That is bloody delicious. That is bloody fantastic. It's got a, a sweet and tangy kind of uh, contrast there. You get some sweetness and then you get some tanginess. There's a, a very noticeable plum and raspberry. And then there is, um, yeah, a little bit of a sort of red wine, but more grape juice. It's just a, a hint of kind of that cask sort of barrel uh, red wine sort of feel, but there's a very noticeable uh, sort of, yeah, grape, grape juice in there, more so than the, uh, the wine. Oh, that's fucking good. Yeah, sweet at first and then tangy aftertaste. In the middle, you're getting plums, you're getting raspberries, you're getting grape juice, and just a hint of that kind of, as I said, woody kind of wine barrel sort of feel. That is fair dinkum fucking brilliant. Let's pair it up 
with a liquid. It's got a couple of liquids going because we've got a couple of mods, but I think this one might pair the best. It's from IVG and it's uh, Vimade Fusion. It's uh, tangy raspberries, zingy oranges, and exotic passion fruit. And it's uh, really quite nice. This is a salt version. Been running it in the uh, 0.8 ohm uh, MTL coil here, and yeah, it has all of those sorts of things. A sort of mixture of those fruits, a little bit sweet, a little bit tangy. The citrus and the uh, sort of raspberry goes real nice together. Let's see how it goes with our fucking beer. Yeah, that's fucking, that's that's a real sort of sweet and sour little mixture. Loads of flavors going on. The raspberries mixing together with that sort of, as I said, slight raspberryness in the beer, really accentuating the plums. The plum is really popping now, and uh, the sort of zesty orange, it's a nice little citrus addition. Yeah, really sweetening things up, I think. The uh, the combination of the two sort of slightly sweet but tart beer and then the sort of slightly sweet but also kind of tangy liquid. It seems to be really taking on a, a sort of sweet pairing there. I just get a lot of sweet raspberry plum and then a bit of citrus on the end. That is fucking nice. Anyway, enough waffling over the beer. Let's get down to the up and close. We've got a bit to go through and then uh, we'll do some pros and fucking cons. Let's have a sticky beak. Okie fucking dokie dickheads, this is the packaging, your lightsaber will come in, it's the same for both models, I can't show you what's on the box because of YouTube policy, there's websites and QR codes on there, but let's see what you get inside. We will get either your Model S or your Model L, a quick start guide, a user manual, USB-C charging cable, a mouth to lung and a direct lung 510 drip tip, bag of spare o-rings and a gasket, and two coils, and it will differ depending on which model you go for, with the Model L mine came with 2.3 ohm direct lung coils, and with the Model S Mine came with 2.8 ohm mouth to lung slash direct lung coils. Now on the back of this card, it does say something different to what came in the box. It says that with the Model L, you get the 0.3, but you also get a 0.55 ohm coil, but I found that not to be the case. I just got 2.3s. And with the Model S, it says that it comes with a 0.8 and it also comes with a 1.05, but uh, that was wrong as well. I just got 2.8. So I don't know whether that's changed in the final retail versions. I don't know whether these are samples or something like that, that they haven't uh, given me the exact uh, sort of coils that you get with um, production, but uh, that's what I got in the box, so just letting you know. But let's get into it. So, as we've said, we've got two different options. You've got a Model L, Model S, very Tesla of them. The uh, the L obviously stands for large, the S obviously stands for small. So as I've already said, you get a 2100 mAh battery in the L and a 1500 mAh battery in the S, and they're just obviously a little bit uh, taller and shorter than each other, and the sleeve that comes off is a little bit uh, longer on the L. So you've got uh, both drip tips that come with it, so it doesn't matter which model you go for, you're gonna get a, a direct lung, and you're also going to get a mouth to lung 510 drip tip as you can see there one's got a little bit different diameter and uh, this is a little bit taller for your mtl sort of style vaping uh, you've got these magnetic tanks so we might just look at one of them they are exactly the same you can interchange them makes no difference uh, which model you go for the tank itself identical you got a couple of, or oh, we've got four magnets on the top here and they sort of just lock into a little slot. So you just twist it and you'll hear it click in and it's nice and secure in there. It's not gonna come out too easily, which is great. You pull off the top cap bit here and that will reveal a little gasket. So you can get in and fill it, very easy to get to. You can twist it out of the way fill up your liquid and off you go. Now the TPD versions will have a two mil capacity and the sort of standard versions for everybody else will have a five mil capacity, which is pretty awesome. Don't know if the TPD has a, a shorter sort of stature on the tank um, or whether it's just got a plug in there to sort of fill up the extra three mils of capacity, but uh, these for me are uh, the standard five mil versions. You've got uh, an adjustable AFC ring. So for direct lung, you've got this large Cyclops system. It's got two openings, one on either side. And then if you want to use sort of the more MTL or restricted, you can twist that closed and then it opens up just these four holes here, nothing on the other side. And if you close it all the way down to sort of nothing at all on any of those, you get a fairly restricted draw. I wouldn't say it's as tight as say like a one mil airflow pin on an RTA or something, but it's reasonably tight for mouth to lung and it's pretty open and airy uh, with these Cyclopses all the way open. Now to get to your coil, you're just gonna take out the tank. You've got an opening there and uh, these coils just go straight in like so. Just push it in, make sure it's nice and snug 
and uh, off you go. Uh, so these are their own BP mods coils, but they are compatible with, as I said, some of those PNP and GTX coils. So this is the uh, 0.8 direct lung slash MTL uh, mesh coil, 12 to 18 watts, and you can sort of open up the airflow and, and vape it as a restricted direct lung, but I've been liking it as more of an MTL sort of uh, style. And then you've also got that uh, slightly larger direct lung 0.3 ohm which is going to be uh, sort of rated at uh, 30 to 40 watts and a mesh coil as well. Now as I said they have uh, made it compatible with some other um, coils out there so this little card here tells us how that sort of compatibility works. So your PNP coils um, it will work with the um, VM, TM, TR and RBA. It won't work with the R slash M coils and with the GTX it'll work with basically anything from a uh, 0.6 ohm resistance and below and also the GTX RBA. It won't work with the above 0.6 ohm GTX coils so just remember that some of the GTX coils won't work but anything under 0.6 will uh, and any of these here from the P and P range will also work. So that's pretty cool that you're able to uh, use other coils out there with their tanks. And you can get those coils from BP and use them in other PNP and GTX options out there. So a fair bit of cross compatibility. So if we take out the tank, if you're not wanting to use the tank, which is a feature I really like, you take off this airflow control ring, all right, just slide that fucker off. And uh, they've made these uh, pretty awesome little 510 kits. It is sold separately, but you grab your 510 kit and you just slide it on over until it clicks into place again like the tank would and it just covers up that airflow control gives you a 510 set of threads and it comes with three different uh, top cap options so you get a uh, 22 millimeter which is what I've got here you also get a 24 millimeter and you also get a 26 millimeter top cap so that just unscrews from there you can bang on your 24 or your 26 if you've got a larger tank and that way you don't have any sort of overhang, you have a nice sort of curved edge or, or slanted edge to meet the bottom of your tank. So uh, for example, I've been using this Labs MTL RTA, which is also from BP Mods. It's 22 millimeters in diameter, so hence I've been using the 22 millimeter cap there. And uh, you've got yourself a little 1500 mar mod now, which is perfect for uh, you know MTL 0.8 ohm uh, coil that I've got in here. And this has been a really nice little fucking setup that I've been using quite a bit while I've been testing this tank. So pretty awesome that uh, you can get that little 510 kit and uh, even more awesome that they've got those different uh, top caps there depending on the diameter of your RTA. So moving our way down, we've got a positive and a negative button and a fire button over here with a USB-C for charging. And uh, if we give it, oh, it is on, but it is a very dark screen, unfortunately. So let me just adjust camera settings. Now on camera, it seems very dark, but in reality, it's uh, a lot brighter than it looks here. They've just got a bit of sort of perspex over the top of it that's uh, not working so well with the camera lens. You've got a battery indicator on the left there. You've got your resistance down the bottom. You've got the voltage being applied on the right-hand side of the bottom, and you've got your wattage uh, on the top there. And it is in 0.1 watt increments. The S will go all the way up to 40 watts and round robin down to 5 and the L model will go up to 60 watts and obviously as low as 5 also. So uh, a reasonable amount of power there given the battery capacity. If you give it one, two, three clicks you can switch it from power mode or wattage over to voltage mode and they've also got a bypass option. We all know how those work but um, just to show you voltage there you go up to 8 volts of uh, output and um, with bypass it's going to give you sort of the raw voltage that's in your battery which is uh, pretty fucking cool that you've got those simple three modes there I've got four volts at the moment and so that's what it's going to give me and that's it for the chip very very simple the only other thing to mention is you can lock the positive and negative buttons by just holding them down together at the same time and now you can't um, adjust them accidentally, which is good because the fire button sort of directly on the other side. And so as you're holding it a lot of the time, you can sort of squeeze and accidentally adjust your wattage. So I like that you're able to lock both of those off and then unlock them with a simple pressing of them together. So moving our way down the mod, you have this uh, lovely little wooden sleeve here, which does differ a bit depending on, um, you know, just the grain of wood. So the one that I've been using 
looks slightly different to the one that uh, I've pulled out of the box here. As you can see, the wood grain's a little different. Uh, then you've got the one on the stainless steel here. looks quite a bit different to the one that I had on my stainless steel. There's some variations in the wood, which is to be expected. It is real wood, but you can get aftermarket wood sleeves, which is pretty cool. This one here, really nice colorations on that, so I've opted to swap it out and use this guy here. These will be sold separately, uh, I'm guessing with maybe some sort of stab wood designs and things like that. Really, really quite classy piece of timber there. Um, but if uh, that's not really your thing, well, they do offer this <laughs> Pimp Shoes Edition. So you change the sleeve by unscrewing the bottom cap here, slide off the wooden bit. There's a, I think there's an O-ring somewhere. Is there an O-ring somewhere? No, maybe not. It's just got a nice little snug fit to it. So off comes the, uh, the wooden sleeve and on goes your snake skin. I don't know whether it's real leather, but um, I'm not really a fan of this. It's, uh, it's got a bit of a sort of, a bit of a lip here, which I think looks kind of ugly. And then the snake skin itself, yeah, not, not my cup of tea. But if you were into that, uh, you can get these sort of leathery sleeves as well, which, uh, hey, it's cool. It's cool that they're offering them. I think uh, it's nice when you get options with your, uh, with your mods and you're not sort of limited to just what comes from the factory. So there you go, dickheads. Don't think there's much more to fucking say here on these two. So let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads, the lightsabers. How long do you think it'll take for Disney to send a cease and desist? You're under arrest, <laughs> Chancellor. Pretty cool little device though, I've got to say. Let's get into the pros and cons. What do I like or what do I fucking dislike? Well, I think uh, form factor and, and design has got to be a big pro. Uh, BP mods have always made pretty elegant looking stuff. It's always pretty classy. They don't do the gimmicky sort of stuff. Uh, and i got to say that this is fucking very well done. Both models, very compact very ergonomic. They've got that nice sort of little hourglass shape to them. Uh, the wood, I think, is a very nice touch. I think it looks fucking, yeah, classy as shit. And the interchangeable sleeve system, very cool. Love to be able to customize my devices. And uh, the ones that they've sent me, this little uh, sort of, I don't know what kind of wood, almost looks like maybe it's stabilized. Looks really nice. Done a bit of a, a Google and I can already see some Juma options out there. There's a, a hammered metal, there's acrylic, uh, and a bunch of different sort of snakeskin leathery ones as well. Haven't really seen them for sale. I think they're still sort of coming uh, to the market, but um, the fact that they are obviously going to be available uh, and out there, pretty cool. Uh, love that you can get a bit of, uh, you know, individuality going on your device. Decent battery capacities on both of these. You know, 1500 mAh, it's uh, it's not a particularly big device. That that little 1500 mAh is, is pretty fucking small uh, for something that holds a decent amount of battery. And the same goes for the 21 uh, I mean, you're looking at basically an 18650, you know, around that sort of 2,000, 2,500 mAh is what most of your 18650s are. There's a few out there that may be a three, but essentially it's a, about as much as you get from a, a single 18650 battery, and it's fucking compact. It is very, very nice and small. And the fact that you can put a 510 adapter on there and run your own tanks uh, is a big pro for me. Uh, these tanks, quite good. We'll get to some of those in a second, but I love to use my own MTL devices and things like that. So being able to whack my own tank on these is a huge fucking thumbs up. Love that they've uh, given you that option. Talking about the tanks, uh, in terms of flavor, the coils right out of the box, the 0.8 and the 0.3, giving me some really, really nice flavor. The 0.8 definitely can be used as mouth to lung. I'm running mine at about 12 watts and you can see plenty of vapor uh, for just 12 watts and uh, the flavor and if I close off the airflow completely, it's a slightly loose mouth to lung. Uh, and then that direct lung, well, yeah, fucking tons of flavor for 30 watts. I think it goes up to 40 or, or 45. So if you're into that sort of lower wattage kind of sub tank coil, uh, they're a great fucking uh, design. And a good resistance, 0.3. There's also that 0.5 option. You're probably not gonna wanna go much lower than 0.3 when you've only got a 2100 uh, milliamp hour battery. But yeah, if you're into that sort of under 50 watt vaping, both coils are doing a very good job of uh, both flavor 
and uh, and cloudage. So uh, yeah, can't complain uh, with those coils. But options there if you want to use some of those PNP or GTX coils uh, from Vaporesso, uh, great that you're able to you know cross compatible your different coils. Uh, and capacity is very decent as well. Five mils on the standard version. Obviously TPD is going to be a bit different, but five mils capacity on a, a nice little tank like that. Uh, very, very decent and easy to fucking feel. 510 drip tip. I love that you're not, uh, you know, stuck with the drip tips that they provide. If you want to put your own on there, get a nice little sleeve going, get a little matchy match fucking drip tip. Uh, yeah, fucking, you got it. You can do it. Really, really well done, I think, in terms of overall design. Uh, you know, you expect that from BP mods. They seem to really think about things and put in a little bit more effort in terms of uh, giving you some options and, uh, and good design. And build quality is very decent on both of these. All the components, the 510 adapter, the sleeves, all really nicely done. We've come to expect that from BP mods. They seem to be just a little bit better than some of your other sort of Chinese competitors. So yeah, this feels like something that would be reasonably expensive. So uh, yeah, don't have much to fucking uh, complain about in terms of cons. What could I fucking say? Um, if you're into temp control, doesn't do temp control, but who the fuck's into that? Like very few people these days. Uh, but apart from that, the only thing I could probably say is airflow with the, the tank, the, the standard tank that it has. If you're into mouth to lung and you want a really tight, like a one millimeter airflow, it's not going to really give it to you. The tightest it'll kind of replicate is maybe like a 1.5 millimeter airflow pin on like an RTA, if you're familiar with that. Yeah, 1.2, 1.5. If you're into your ones or your 0.8 millimeter airflow pins, not quite going to get down there. But for me, and I do like a tight restricted MTL, it's still doing a job uh, just fine. The only other complaint I would have is it has that rounded bum, and so it is pretty easy to knock over. Even the short Model S version, uh, which I've been using probably the most, I knock it over a lot on my desk. Just a, a slight sort of bump or a, a, even a wobble of the table, and she falls over. Uh, not a big deal. It's just because it's got that rounded bum there. It does feel more comfortable in the hand. I think if you had a flat bottom, then uh, it may be feeling a little bit less ergonomic, but uh, something to mention that, yeah, it's uh, an easy one to uh, wobble over. But apart from that, I really don't have anything to fucking whinge about here. In terms of performance and, uh, you know, design, they've done a fucking great job. So what are they going to set you back? Well, not a whole lot, which is great. Uh, can't tell you any websites or where to get them, dickheads, thanks to YouTube policy, so don't bloody ask me. But if you do a bit of a Google search, you can find the Model L for about $62.99 US, about $63 bucks is what I've seen it going for. Uh, the Model S seems to be a little bit harder to come by, and um, I have only seen it on a couple of sort of Chinese sites, but about five bucks less than the larger version seems to be the going rate. So just under that $60 dollar mark and if you want to get that 510 uh, adapter you're looking at 12 dollar dues us so uh, again very affordable across the board if you picked up one of these and the uh, adapter you're looking at like 70 fucking seven dollars it's uh very very decent 75 bucks something like that so uh yeah fucking can't really complain on the price good job there bp mods but that probably does me dickheads don't have anything more to really say here i think if you're into your pre-made coils if you like it whether mouth to lung or just a, a lower wattage direct lung coil sub tank sort of style you're going to like this because it's a classy all-in-one little kit but if you're not into pre-made coils you've got that 510 adapter it doesn't cost much and uh, you've got yourself a classy little internal battery mod uh would love to see maybe an 18650 version bp mods that would be fucking cool a removable 18650 version eh? you could uh, make it maybe just a slightly larger version on the model l or model x i don't know but i'd love to see an 18650 but uh as is the internal batteries uh, pretty fucking decent on these from what i have experienced so i'll bugger off but i'll put the usual instagram and facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this muppet gets up to outside the youtube videos if you want to support my channel please do hit the like it subscribe button always helps me out share the video around but if you really want to keep me behind the lens then think about hitting some of my support links as I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means I don't take payments for doing reviews. I don't do any sponsorships. There's no sneaky jumping the queue fees or any crap like that. I want to make sure I can give you a truly unbiased opinion on the crap I'm talking about. But to do that, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page, a special content, do a vlog on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as access to my little Patreon community. I've got a few bits and bobs I give away from time to time. I've got a couple of these kits I'll be passing on to the Patreons because those fuckers keep me doing my thing. So bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back. 
Some of your fucking dicks off, or your bloody tits off. Couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on. Whether it looks like a lightsaber or it looks like a box. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh.